Well, good evening. Sometimes there's a bonus video, and sometimes there are videos that are made for an audience of one, even if it's just me. But, uh, you know, I really enjoyed doing the bullet video the other night and then talking about the seven ups. And it's really a shame that I don't have any vehicles from the seven ups, which would have been uh, basically Pontiacs. Um, or for the French Connection. Uh, but I do have a couple of movies uh, besides Bullet um, and a couple of cars that sort of go with those movies. First one we're going we're gonna to go uh, into is the original Gone in 60 Seconds. Um, so many people are familiar with the Nicolas Cage uh, remake. Uh, but the original's Gone in 60 Seconds, um, H.B. Helicky's, Toby Helicky's, um, movie is a, was a low budget movie. And the premise is similar to the Nicolas Cage. Obviously, the Nicolas Cage movie is based on this. But Eleanor was not a custom uh, 68 Shelby GT500. It was a very standard yellow Mach 1 um, Mustang, 72 or 73. Um, this movie was not great cinema, but it was a fun movie. Um, basically, almost a non-stop chase scene. No CGI, all real cars, all real crashes. And the Mustang that goes with that, I do not have a yellow one, but I do have this green Mach 1 from Johnny Lightning. I have uh, this Johnny Lightning casting in several colors, but this light green is closest I could come for this year for this Mustang. So, um, if you've never seen the original Gone in 60 Seconds, um, if you've got time, just skim through it. It's, it's, like I said, it's not great cinema. The acting is not fantastic. I mean, the remake um, had a phenomenal cast. And here's a little trivia for you. So, the original movie, Eleanor, was a 19... 73 Mach 1, 72 Mach 1 in yellow. Uh, and Toby Hillicky passed away, but his widow and the estate um, hold great sway over the copyrights related to the original movie and including the name Eleanor. So for the um, Nicolas Cage movie, you can barely see there on the cover, but everybody knows what that Eleanor looks like. That is a uh, customized 1968 Shelby GT500. I have this stock 1968 uh, Shelby GT500 from Johnny Lightning, uh, and I will not buy uh, the movie Eleanor in uh, diecast because uh, the estate... Uh, the copyright holders are brutal. Um, there was a fella that made a replica of uh, Eleanor uh, for his YouTube channel, and the lawyers went after him, and they actually took the car. Uh, the fella had spent all this money customizing the car to look like the movie car, um, and it was it was uh, quite nasty. Uh, so. The widow holds on to this uh, copyright very tightly. Now, little lesser-known follow-up film by uh, Halicki there is Junk Man from the maker of Gone in 60 Seconds. And again, not a cinematic masterpiece, but if you're a car guy, lots of fun. And uh, I do not have anything in diecast but there is a very rare car that features in this form in, in this film called
called a Bricklin. And uh, I don't know if anybody does that in diecast, but I'd be interested to find out. And so I'm going to move the Mustangs out of the way for a second. And we're going to pull up another DVD here that I mentioned the other night. Um, and it is Dirty Mary, Crazy Larry. So this yellowish green Dodge Charger um, I have this yellow Roadrunner and of course everybody has a Charger uh, I have several but not in a similar color so this was uh, an interesting movie uh, with uh, Peter Fonda and Susan George um, and if you're young, you won't know who they are. But this was actually a pretty decent film. Uh, it's basically a long car chase and sort of twisted love story. Um, Peter Fonda and his partner, his mechanic, um, they stage a robbery. They bumble into her. She jumps into the car and they're running from the police across the states. Um, they ditch the original car and... The majority of the chases are then in this Charger. Um, this is actually a good movie. Uh, it's not the 7-Ups, um, but it's a good movie. And um, the two cars that you see most in it are a 1966 four-door Chevy uh, Bel Air and then the Charger. So this is what we're doing tonight is movies and cars that were in them. Um, and this one is an iconic movie. I say iconic for a certain generation, I guess. Uh, Two-lane blacktop. And the main cast consists of James Taylor here. The James Taylor, the singer. Um... Dennis Wilson here and Laurie Bird here. So you've got musicians and then uh, Warren Oates. Okay. And on the cover, you can see the, the uh, 56, 55 Chevy gasser. Uh, and in the background, there's a GTO judge, I believe, the, uh, there. Okay. And these two fellas are aspiring racers who, who pick up races along the way as they go from uh, drag strip to drag strip. They pick up street races and they race Warren Oates in the GTO and they travel across the country. It's, it's, it's a good film. Um, James Taylor, surprisingly, um, does well. Actually, so does Dennis Wilson. Um, now, I don't have any gassers. The only 55 Chevy I have is this um, Bel Air, the one, the off-road version. Big Air Bel Air. Um, so it's a stand-in. But I do have a GTO, but it's not yellow. I have a GTO judge. This is an old Matchbox uh, 70 GTO. And I recommend this movie highly. Uh, I, I've watched it many times. Uh, it's a period piece. It, it was um, nomination for Movie of the Year, Esquire. And uh, that one's pretty good. And now the, uh, the next two are tough to find cars for also, simply because there are so many cars in the films. But this is a great comedy from the 80s. I wonder if any of you have seen this. The Hollywood Nights with Tony Danza and Michelle Pfeiffer. Well, they're in it, but they're not integral to the story. Uh, this, is, this is what we call a tease, you know. Uh, you think you're going to see Tony Danza and Michelle Pfeiffer, and then it's mostly Robert Wool and Fran Drescher. Um, and there's a lot of cool cars in this. Uh, there's the uh, Nomad sedan delivery here. There's uh, 
New Bomb's brothers, El Camino. Um, there is actually at the time a magazine called Popular Hot Rodding had a car they called Project X, which was a yellow 57 Chevy that they would try different aftermarket parts on. And in the movie, it had a huge BDS blower sticking through the hood and slicks. And it was the halo car of the movie, but it was not integral. And at one point, one of the fellas um, is is uh, supposed to race a Cobra. And they keep on talking about, when are you going to go get your rail job? It's a funny, funny movie. It's cool for all the cars, Volkswagens, Mustangs, everything that you see in the background. Um, it was trying to be a later generation um, American Graffiti. Um, and it wasn't. Um, American Graffiti, uh, a lot of you younger guys may not have seen that. Um, Ron Howard drove a white 58 Impala in that movie. Uh, actually, and then his little friend uh, borrowed the car. And so that's a funny thing from that movie. Um, the other day, uh, I believe it was Colin or Tyrone, uh, when I was talking about Chase movies, and I was also talking about the Australian uh, short film called The Chase Is On. Oh, you should see The Beast, or Love the Beast, Eric Bonner's uh, Banna, excuse me, Eric Banna, from the Hulk and from, uh, oh, uh, oh my God, um, the one where the airplane, uh, the helicopter went down. Uh, his love affair with his restored 73 Falcon XB. And everybody loves the Mad Max version, but again, I always love showing this one because this has the actual stock front end. This is closer to the Beast. Uh, and Eric took that car and raced it uh, around the circuit and crashed it. But it, you know, it was a labor of love, him restoring it and racing that car. Um, now, uh, another another very funny movie that has tons of cars and trucks in it. Uh, Kurt Russell in Used Cars. Uh, it's this hysterical comedy with so many cars, it's impossible to count them. Um, funny enough, I was on the phone with my brother earlier, and we were talking about how the good guys were in a black Chevy square body 4x4, and they're being chased by the bad guys in uh, a Chevy like that. Uh, but again, there were so many cars in the film, all sorts of Mustangs and Volkswagens and Pontiacs. Um, it is hysterical. And then some, uh, some cars for honorable mention, of course. Uh, we had Bullet the other day. There's the Bullet Mustang. There's a black Charger, not the movie real set uh, that I did the other day. These are just two others. This is the Ravel. This is a uh, Hot Wheels. Um, and I have mentioned before the Citroen SM, which is in just the very beginning of the movie, the Burt Reynolds movie, uh, The uh, Longest Yard. Uh, and it's famous because he dumps it in the bay uh, out of spite. Um, we're going to go for tenuous connections here. Uh, does anybody remember the movie The Birds, the Alfred Hitchcock movie? And there was an Austin Healy 3000. You may recognize the back of this as they're driving away from the house at the end of the movie very quietly, very slowly in the Austin Healy 3000. These are just cars I really love and I want to just show off. Um... We could go for some easy ones. Uh, later movie, John Wick, with this beautiful Boss 429 Mustang. Uh, and this is a green light Hollywood series for John Wick. This is the actual car from the movie. But some more obscure. Um, I mentioned uh, 
earlier when I had done a video on uh, Matchbox, uh, the original Saint TV show with Roger Moore. He drove a white uh, Volvo P eighteen hundred S. Um, but again, this is going. This is going to go the way back machine. I think the only person who who uh, watches regularly that might recognize this one um, would be Saul of Saul's Diecast Odyssey. Saul, do you remember who drove a car like this in the Avengers? Uh, put her name in the comments if you recall. Uh, a fantastic actress who unfortunately passed away this year had a wonderful career uh, and was active. Uh, I think her the last roles that I remember seeing her in were Game of Thrones, believe it or not, and uh, an episode of Doctor Who a few years ago. Um, go for the uh, low-hanging fruit. Smokey and the Bandit. This is Smokey and the Bandit 2, the 1981 Turbo Trans Am. I'm sorry, 1980 Turbo Trans Am. Uh, the original was 1977. Um, and this one is for my brother Bob. There is an Emilio Estevez movie that this car features heavily in. Repo Man is always intense. Harry Dean Stanton and Emilio Estevez in the counterculture sci-fi comedy Repo Man. Uh, and if you've seen the movie, you should recognize this. Uh, and if you know the movie, Bob, don't answer. But if you know the movie, tell me what's in the trunk of the car. It's an integral part to the movie. Uh, so there, I've rambled on for over 15 minutes. Uh, this is going to be random TV and film cars. Uh, and some films that I recommend if you haven't seen. Uh, especially these two, Hollywood Nights and Used Cars, are fun. Um, I believe they're both PG-13. I don't think they're R-rated. Um, you know, there is some language. Oh, no, this is... Oh, it is R-rated. Okay, it's r -rated. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah, that would be... Yeah, I guess maybe both of them would be. Uh, let's see. Yeah, they are both R-rated. Don't watch them in front of the kids. I mean, there's no overt nudity that I remember, um, you know, it's, it's T and A, you know, nothing, nothing that's going to traumatize the kids. Um, and then not f so much funny, but Tulane Blacktop is, is a, a really great movie, uh, as is, uh, Dirty Mary, Crazy Larry. That one is more of an adult movie. Actually, they're all, these are all, I guess, adult movies, uh, if you're going to watch them with the kids, make sure they're over 14 and pre-screen them. Um, but I just, uh, I was on the phone with my brother and we were talking about this and I just thought it would be a really cool, quick video to make. Um, even though it is going to take almost 20 minutes of your time, unless you fast forward like a lot of people do. So, uh, like, share, subscribe, comment. Have you seen... Some of these movies, would you want to see them? Um, are there any cars here that uh, that really jump out at you that you want to see again in more detail? Um, oh, honorable mention to the Blues Brothers, uh, where they wrecked more of these than anybody else in the world. Um, these uh, big Dodge Polaris and Dodge, well, Dodge Monaco's and the Polaris, these big full-size police cars featured in a ton of movies, the Blue Brothers, and TV shows like Hill Street Blues. If you're old enough to remember Hill Street Blues, imagine this white with a blue stripe, a ton of them coming up through the uh, garage and hitting the streets. Uh, Hill Street Blues being uh, about the Chicago Police Department. So there we go, almost 20 minutes. Uh, this was fun for me. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, have a good night.